Yo, what is up? It's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Continuing our mnemonics playlist today, we have a great mnemonic about Paget disease, also known as Ostitis deformans. Itis means inflammation, Osti means bone, deformans means deformity. It's a story of pathological bones, increasing my risk of pathological bone fractures and deformity. But should I believe blame the osteoclasts or should I blame the osteoblasts? Let's talk about it. But before we do, remember that we have three Paget diseases in medicine. There is Paget disease of bone, which is today's topic. There is Paget disease of the vulva and there is Paget disease of the breast. I have many videos in this mnemonics playlist, so please watch them. Do you remember my anatomy playlist? Because we classified bones based on position into axial, midline, or appendicular, right or left. According to structure, we have compact bone, also known as cortical, and cancellous bone, also known as spongy or trabecular. According to development, bones are either intramembranous ossification or they came to be via intracartilaginous ossification. And of course, they have gazillion types of shapes. Remember, bones could be classified in another way into lamellar bone, usually normal, versus woven bone, usually abnormal or immature. Lamellar bone is what you know already, compact bone, the cortical, and the cancellous bone, which is trabecular. Compact is for strength, cancellous is for flexibility. Woven bone, immature or pathological, immature, such as embryonic skeleton or fracture callus. Pathological is osteosarcoma, cancer of the bone, and fibrous dysplasia, and Paget disease, and pathological fractures, etc. So, in Paget disease, we will find woven bone, because Paget disease is a pathology, and we might also find some pathological lamellar bone. Please recall that osteoblasts build up your bone, versus osteoclasts, which cut down your bone. Your bone cells are osteocytes. Osteo means bone, sites means cell. Blasts mean to build up, clast means to cut down. I have a video on my channel called the rank and the rank ligand story. Remember that in order for me to activate the osteoclast, I usually have to activate the osteoblast first. So I go like this, osteoblastic stromal cell, which has the rank ligand. That's the key. Where is the lock? The lock is the rank receptor. The rank receptor is on the osteoclast. Now here's the osteoblast activating the osteoclast. When the osteoclast is active, it will cut down your bone. Hashtag bone resorption. So you're saying that I can activate the osteoblast and end up breaking down my bone? Yes. Anytime you activate your osteoblast, you know what's going to happen? Secretion of more alkaline phosphatase. And this alkaline phosphatase did not come from your liver or biliary system. Instead, it came from your bones. How can I stop this process of bone destruction and bone resorption? Bisphosphonates is a class of medication that might help because of the inhibition of the osteoclast. In today's video, I'll use the P mnemonic and also the B mnemonic because it's all about rotation and reflection. Let's go, Paget disease mnemonic. It's ostitis deformans. Why? Because we have pathological bones leading to pathological fractures and deformities. Deformans. It's a focal disease. We have spots. I can have one spot called monoostotic Paget disease, or I can have multiple spots called polyostotic Paget disease, and the bone is very chaotic poor quality bone, hypervascular bone, and sometimes with an AV fistula. Here's an artery, okay, and here's a vein, nice. What normally should happen is that I should wait until I reach the capillary end where the artery communicates with the vein. Oh, that sounds good. However, in Paget disease, this is happening here, early on. So the blood is not reaching the capillary, the blood is not waiting for the capillary. The blood will shunt quickly to the vein and then quickly to the heart, creating a hyperdynamic circulation, also known as high output cardiac failure. This is one bypass 
which increases the patient's risk of vascular steel syndromes. Is Paget disease common? No, it's relatively rare or sparse or peculiar. It is very rare. Among those rare cases, a very large percentage of patients can be traced to Great Britain, including the UK and British offshoot societies, such as United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. In Africa, Paget disease is more common in South Africa. Other than that, Paget is less common in Sub-Saharan Africa, less common in the Middle East and North Africa, extremely uncommon in Japan, China, Korea, etc. Pathogenesis, some genetic factors and some environmental factors. Environmental factors like what? Like viruses, especially polymyxovirus, like pets, that's another P, toxins, uh, living in rural areas, please forgive me, peasants. Easy medicosis, easy. Now you're using peasants in a mnemonic. Before you know it, the slippery slope will take you to make a mnemonic called let them eat cake. I need to have some respect for myself. When it's genetic and environmental, and we cannot pinpoint it to a singular gene or a singular Mendelian pattern, what do we call such a disease? multifactorial, let me just say polyfactorial to make the mnemonic fit. Paget disease is progressive, it gets progressively worse in severity, not in distribution. What do I mean by that? Let's say that I had Paget disease in my pelvis for 10 years, and I went to the doctor and said, doctor, my bone disease is getting worse. It's probably the same pelvis getting worse and not the disease spreading to other joints that never afflicted me before. It's progressive in severity around an old joint, not in distribution to newly affected joints. All I'm trying to say, this is not a freaking rheumatic fever or Lyme disease for that matter. This is not a migratory disease. Next, my favorite part, signs and symptoms. What's the most common symptom? First of all, many patients are asymptomatic. If you're talking about a symptom, the most common symptom is pain. Bone pain, joint pain, etc. What's the most common bone then? Pelvis, lumbar spine, scapula, and tibia. Three phases of Paget disease, early, intermediate, and late. Early, it's the destructive phase, which means lytic, which means osteoclasts. Do we expect elevated levels of alkaline phosphatase here? The answer is no, because alkaline phosphatase is made by the osteoblasts. Hold your horses. Next, we have intermediate phase, mixed, lytic, and blastic, which means osteoclasts and osteoblasts. You'll start to see elevation of alkaline phosphatase. See, good things happen to those who wait. Unless, of course, you are the poor Paget disease patient. Late stage, sclerotic, blastic, osteoblasts alone, which means alkaline phosphatase will be very high. If it's osteoblastic, it is sclerotic, hardening, and this will lead to gazillion symptoms. My skull bones are hardening. They are getting bigger increasing the head size. So I just looked up a hat type that starts with a P and lo and behold, it's a British hat. You cannot make this up. The mnemonic is just writing itself. Increase the size of the hat is one sign of Paget disease. Do you remember another disease that also had increased size of my hat? If you say acromegaly, you're absolutely correct. If you say blastic cancer metastasis to the bones of the skull, also possible. And this pagetetic bone is very warm. Let's say that I have paget disease in my pelvis. My pelvis is warm to the touch. How about my lumbar spine? Warm to the touch. Hashtag Paget is piping hot. Why? Inflammation, baby. It's itis, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Speaking of swelling of that bone will impinge on that nerve, causing nerve impingement nerve entrapment, such as carpal tunnel syndrome, tarsal tunnel syndrome, any tunnel syndrome, etc. Pathological fractures and deformities, and anytime we have repetitive trauma or repetitive lesions, what do we increase the risk of? Cancers, neoplastic degeneration, 
and don't forget that these patients tend to be older. Most patients with Paget disease are diagnosed after the age of 50. You can add another P for philosopher. A wise person has been around the block many times. Let's diagnose Paget disease. Well, in the late stage, it is sclerotic, blastic, osteoblastic, creating tons of alkaline phosphatase. Isolated elevation of alkaline phosphatase. What do you mean, medicosis? I mean that all of the other parameters for bone problems are normal. Serum calcium is fine, serum phosphate is fine, even serum parathyroid hormone is fine, but the patient is having bone problems. The only thing that is elevated is alkaline phosphatase. And to prove to you that this is not the alkaline phosphatase coming from the liver, we can do two things. We can check the liver and the biliary system. Oh, liver is fine, biliary system is fine, the patient does not have any problems here. Then who do you think made the alkaline phosphatase, the hepatocyte? Shut up! It's the osteoblast. Okay, medicosis, I'm still not convinced. Recall that we have two types of alkaline phosphatase. The good old serum alkaline phosphatase, which most doctors have heard of, and we also have bone-specific alkaline phosphatase. Almost no doctor has heard of. I'm joking, of course. Both of these are elevated in Paget disease. Now I'm convinced that it's coming from the bone. A bone biopsy will show broad bones, prominent cement lines, giving the characteristic mosaic pattern. Why is the cement so prominent? Well, who's making the cement, doofus? osteoblasts, and they are extremely unhinged in the last stage. The bone is pathologic, the bone is poor quality, the bone has a chaotic juxtaposition, too much chaos in the world. Where is Jordan Peterson when you need him? Hi, medicosis, do I need to get a biopsy to diagnose Paget disease? No, a biopsy is not trying to rule in Paget, it is more likely trying to rule out an osteosarcoma. That's why you do a biopsy. But as for Paget disease diagnosis, the history, the physical exam, the isolated elevation of alkaline phosphatase, and the bone scan are more than enough to clinch the diagnosis. What would I see on imaging? If you do the good old x-ray, bone expansion, cortical thickening, why? Osteoblasts, sclerotic lesions. If you do a bone scan, which is very sensitive for Paget disease, unfortunately not very specific, you will see blastic lesions. How do I know they are blastic? Increase uptake on scintigraphy, also known as nuclear medicine or nuclear bone scan. Why do you say not specific? Because I can show you other diseases with increased uptake at the pelvis, the lumbar spine, and the scapula, and they will look exactly like Paget on the stupid nuclear bone scan. So just because a test is expensive doesn't necessarily mean that it is specific. Management, how can we treat Paget? Optimize your intake of calcium and phosphate. Make sure your serum level of calcium, phosphate, parathyroid is good. Take vitamin D, lifestyle modification, diet, exercise, etc. And for medications, bisphosphonate. Refer to my chart on the rank and the rank ligand. Paget disease can open fistulas in bones, leading to high output cardiac failure, also known as hyperdynamic circulation, where everything is fast and everything is dilated. And this is not peculiar to Paget disease. This hyperdynamic circulation is common in anemia, anaphylactic shock, any AV fistula anywhere for any reason, acromegaly, beriberi, pregnancy, big time, Paget disease, carcinoid, sepsis, hyperthyroidism, obesity. Oh, by the way, quick note, this patient and this patient can have increased hat size. It's all about integration, baby. Please pause and review. Hi, hey, medicosis, it's a great mnemonic, but I think it's too much. Can we pinpoint to the most important point? Of course. Paget disease, pathological bones, fractures and deformities. The third phase is blastic, sclerotic, thank you, osteoblasts. 
bone pain, joint pain at the pelvis and the lumbar spine, increase head size, diagnose with isolated elevation of the alkaline phosphatase, and increase uptake on nuclear bone scan, treat me with lifestyle modification, make sure my serum phosphate, calcium, PTH, vitamin D are fine, and give me bisphosphonates. That's it, Paget disease in 30 seconds. Paget disease, fistulas in my bones, hypervascularity, the fistula is a bypass, which increases the risk for steel syndromes in my Paget disease patients, such as coronary steel syndrome, subclavian steel syndrome, coronary steel syndrome, and gastric steel syndrome. All of these are steel syndrome. You can learn about all of these steel syndromes and much more if you download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.